good afternoon everybody uh, i know it's almost end of the summit <coughs> so you are you are you are busy maybe planning to go home or kind of thing uh, we'll take half an hour only uh, so this talk is about application auto scaler uh, how many of you have heard of or application auto scaler project okay good um, so application auto scaler project is a uh, uh, cloud foundry incubator project it is being collaborated uh, between sap ibm and fujitsu so now fujitsu actually exists so it's being managed by sap and ibm right now we have couple of developers from sap side as well as uh, uh, from ibm side uh, i'm tanmay pal from sap i work as a senior developer in sap bangalore location uh, we have uh, rohit Hi. rohit sarma from sap bangalore location and uh, I'll just uh, give you a, a little advanced topic on autoscaler. Uh, that is, uh, autoscaler bring your own matrix to have custom matrix facility with autoscaler. So, what is an app autoscaler? App autoscaler is a cloud foundry extension that provides the capability to scale your application based on two different things, either through the resource load, through dynamic scaling, or based on schedule based scaling. So uh, while talking about dynamic uh, scaling, it means if, if you have pushed your application and if your application memory consumption or the response time or throughput is going high, you want to scale up your application instance. Or if it is going below some threshold, you want to scale it down to reduce the cost. And also there are some use cases where you can do, uh, you want to scale up your application on a specific time or in a recurrent uh, schedule. Let's suppose for a payment related, uh, let's suppose a payment related application, payroll service. You want it uh, multiple instances or, or you, are, you are expecting ma maximum load during the end of the month to generate the pay slips and all. Those time you can actually scale up your application and the remaining month you can just scale down to the minimum instance. So those also we can cover uh, using a schedule based uh, scaling and in schedule based scaling we have two different time either at a specific time once let, let's suppose I want to scale up maybe on 13th of October or at 8 o'clock one time or you can say okay every every month 29th uh, morning I want to scale it up so that is also possible using schedule based scaling now uh, let's suppose if we do not have application auto scaler project at all in your uh, uh, deployment so how do you monitor your application? You just push your application or deploy your application. You keep monitoring your application. And you, if, if, you, if you think I need some uh, scaling up or scaling down required, you manually do a CF scale to the, to the required instances and again keep monitoring. Though it looks very simple, but it is not that simple because you, you, you really don't know when your application's resource will be very high or very low. Maybe in the mid, mid of the night, your application resource becomes very high, memory consumption becomes very high, you didn't check, your application crashes. Or maybe you, you, you didn't check your application for a long time and it's not required, you have three or four instances running, so which will incur more cost. So it is little, little difficult to manually monitor all the time and ma doing a manual scaling operation. In case of if you use application autoscaler project, what you have to do, you have to just create an application autoscaler service instance. You bind your, appli your application to this service instance using a policy. Uh, policy is a set of rules where you specify when do you want to scale up or scale down. You can specify, okay, I want to scale up my application when my web application response time is very low to some certain uh, amount, or maybe my memory usage of the application is above 80%. Or you want to scale it down when it is less than 35%. So all those things you can specify in this policy and you have to just pass those policies during the service binding. And then you relax. You don't need to do anything. The application autoscaler will keep on monitoring your application load, what is the current resource consumption, and based on that it will scale up and scale down. And if you think it might actually hit you uh, very heavily in, in the cost, it will, it can actually scale up, 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 up. It's not like that. You can specify the maximum number of instance you can scale up. Let's suppose you, you specify uh, minimum is two and maximum is 10. So even if your application load is keep on increasing, it will not scale up more than 10 instances. Now, what are the different uh, 
uh, metrics as of now application autoscaler supports. So those, we, we support the basic standard container metrics. So memory usage in MB. So you can specify, OK, uh, I have given 1 GB of memory or 2 GB of memory to my application. And if it consumes 1.5 GB, I want to scale it up. But there are some certain situations where this absolute value in MB doesn't work well. So you, you, you specify 2 GB, and you don't want to specify a very absolute value. Rather, you want, OK, if it is above 80%, you scale up, or below 30%, you scale down. You can use memory usage in percentage. Similarly, response time, if you want your web application response time, maybe 5 seconds or more, less than that, you can specify in response time metrics in millisecond. Also, throughput, throughput is how, how many requests uh, per second your application can actually handle, and ab above those, uh, those threshold value, maybe you, you, you want to scale up, or if it is below that threshold, you want to scale it down. Now, everything seems OK here, but the problem is it is not possible to actually uh, measure the resource load of the application with only these four metrics. It's not at all possible, because we have different varieties of application using different resources. We are just considering the memory response time and throughput, so which is not fair enough. So I can just give you some example. Uh, let's suppose uh, you are using a Java application, maybe heap memory, or garbage collection statistics, or JVM statistics is very important when to scale up or scale down, because that is kind of a, important uh, performance metrics for a Java application. But for if you are using a message queue, let's suppose RabbitMQ, so the number of message already in the queue, or it is in the ready state, you send message, and message is not acknowledged, which is also a very uh, crucial parameter. You are using some in-memory, let's suppose, Redis or something like that. So what is the latency or hit rate or evicted keys of your uh, uh, in-memory uh, thing, you can just uh, specify that. If you are using a Node.js application, maybe JVM or heap memory is not the ideal parameter to uh, consider for the um, for, to consider for resource load. Maybe the event loop statistics is important for Node.js application. Similarly, we can have any number of uh, such uh, per, uh, parameters, uh, like HTTP error rate, or maybe you got some error in the log based on which you want to scale up. So there are some situations where your application is running. If you get certain, certain types of log error, so which means something is wrong with the application and you want to scale it up, that is also possible. Or maybe HTTP status code. But the problem with these things is, yeah, we, we, we need to have some uh, uh, consideration on this parameter, but this is not readily available in the container. So we need some way to consider this performance metrics while doing my uh, scaling up or scaling down uh, applications. So we, we, how, do, how did we uh, achieve this thing? So we did, uh, we, we introduced a new thing which is called a custom matrix. It is completely new thing. So it's like you specify, rather than memory, response time, throughput, you specify your own matrix, give it to autoscaler, and autoscaler will handle the scaling operation. So this is the architecture diagram. So this stepwise, you, once the, you, you, you have an, a running application in the uh, Cloud Foundry, you create a service instance of application autoscaler. And then you bind your application to the autoscaler service instance. Once the binding happens successfully, you will get the credentials, which will have one username, password, and the URL. So what URL, I, I'll just explain in later. Uh, then once you get those credentials, your service, bro your broker, uh, your uh, Application, then it is your response because we do not have, or the container doesn't have these uh, custom metrics information. So it is your responsibility to send those metrics to the application autoscaler through a simple HTTP REST API. Once you send it to application autoscaler, so we have a metrics forwarder component which will actually convert actually convert this to a uh, um, logregator uh, metrics through a metron agent inbuilt. So there is a logregator agent or metron agent in, inside the metrics forwarder, which forwards your metrics to the logregator. 
Once it is with the log aggregator, it is all same. So whether it's a container matrix or standard matrix or a custom matrix, it's all same. So we have a matrix collector component which keeps reading your matrix. So whether it is a standard matrix or custom matrix, it keeps reading. And it does some aggregation based on your instance level. It, if you might have multiple instances also, and once this matrix selector collected and it's aggregated, then Autoscaler decides, or it actually go back to your policy and check what, what threshold or what policy you defined. And based on that, it asks the scaling engine to perform the scaling operation. And scaling engine triggers a scaling of the instances. Now, I said uh, during the service binding, you will get some credentials. So this would be something like that. Once you bind your application to the Autoscaler service instance, we'll get uh, credential, which is the username, password, and the URL. So because ultimately, you have to do a REST API call. So that URL is the base URL to hit the REST API endpoints. And it is already authenticated. So you have to use this username and password for the authentication. And how the REST API looks like? So REST API is a simple POST API. So this V1 apps and the app GUID is known to you because you, you know your app GUID and metrics. You have to just uh, append this part with the URI you got from the service binding. And this is the request body. In the request body, what you have to specify? The instance index, because you might have uh, multiple instances running of a single application. So you have to provide the instance index so that we can just aggregate those uh, metrics in, in an application level. And simultaneously, you can send an array of metrics. As many metrics you want, you can send. Um, there are three things, name, value, and unit. The name would be the name of the matrix, and it should exactly match with the name of the matrix you specified in the policy. Otherwise, otherwise it will mismatch. There is a value. So as of now, we are supporting a gauge matrix. So you can specify any gauge matrix value, and definitely the unit. What would be the unit of uh, your application? You have to specify. So this is the REST API structure. You have to just keep calling in, in, in certain frequency from your application to autoscaler. And then Autoscaler will take care of scaling up of, or scaling down of your application based on the, the data uh, or the metrics you provide. Maybe uh, a small uh, demo will help you to understand better. So we'll have a very sm small demo. I'll hand over it to Rohit for uh, giving you a small demo. Hi, good afternoon. So. I'll start the demo. I already have logged in to one of our dev environments. So is it visible or should I increase the font? Okay. I think this should be good enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. I've logged into our, one of our dev environment, as you can see. Uh, let's quickly check the marketplace. So it's quite difficult to read. I'll decrease the size a little. Yeah. yeah. So you can see there are three plans. Uh, I'll just use any of those plans. So I'm using the standard plan and creating a service instance autoscaler standard. And the service instance is created. I have another service instance, uh, RabbitMQ, which I'll use for the demo. And I have already pushed an application over here. So let's bind autoscaler to this application. And let's start the application.
So the application has started. Uh, it's a simple application. Uh, so it has a UI which shows the RabbitMQ queue length, uh, which you can so you can just do simple REST API calls and it increases or decreases the UI uh, queue length. So let's make it zero. Oh, we'll consume all. Now we have uh, binded the application. Let's see the application environment. Here you can see this is the credential which it got after binding to autoscaler. So the password, the URL, and the username. Using basic auth, this application sends the job queue length message queue length to autoscaler as a custom matrix. So the endpoint you saw, it uses that and keeps on sending on five second intervals. So autoscaler gets your matrix. Your matrix is getting monitored by autoscaler. So let's apply a simple policy to it. So Uh, using the this is not a standard autoscaler command this is autoscaler plugin command autoscaler attach autoscaling api so i have attached a policy let's see what the policy looks like so as you can see the policy is minimum number of instances one maximum number of instances four the metric type is job queue, which is not one of the standard types, so it's considered as custom metrics. And the threshold is 100, so if it is above 100, it should scale out. If it is less than 40, it should scale in. So let's increase the queue size. And I'll start monitoring the application. So currently it has one instance running. Maybe, uh, maybe we, can, we can go back to policy and yeah. uh, explain. Meanwhile, it. I'll explain the policy a bit more. So here, uh, if you have attended the earlier session, you might already know. Uh, so there's something called breach duration second. So this is uh, the time during which your aggregated matrix has to be higher than the threshold which is being used. And there's adjustment parameter which you can see here, plus one. So if your average memory is higher during that time, then it should scale it by one instance. And uh, yeah, so rest are already all standard yeah. operators. So the ne also there's one more thing, cooldown. So this is used to uh, so where your application, once it scales up or scales down, your average aggregated memory matrix takes some time to get normalized. And so for that reason, autoscaler makes your, so you can provide this and let your application wait some time. So to get that, in, uh, to get your application instant matrix normalization done, and then on, you can again do a scaling if it is again needed. So as we can see on the left hand side, it's already scaled. So we have two instances running over here. Uh, let's quickly check application history. So this is also one of the CLI plugin commands, auto scaling history. So it shows you the history of, of the auto, all the scaling is done by auto scaler. As you can see here, it increased by one instance because the job queue was greater than 100 messages for 60 seconds. So I would hand it back to Tanmay again. 
So uh, the demo we have seen here, the application or this sample application is uh, what it, it was doing. It bounds to autoscaler service instance and internally every five seconds, it just keeps on sending the job queue to the autoscaler uh, application. Now autoscaler and with a policy, when defining the policy, it has a policy with job queue specification where the threshold was if it is above 100, it should scale up. So we said uh, in, through the app, uh, the Q size was 150, so which is above 100, and it scaled it up. This is uh, that simple, and this uh, uh, reading from the binding credentials and sending uh, sending through uh, REST API is encoded in the in the uh, demo applications. Yeah. So, any question? No, it's up to you. You can define any metrics you want. But how do you define, for example, if I provide a name of a metric, how does that map to something real? Okay. So um, we have standard set of, set of metrics like memory usage, memory percentage, response time, and throughput. Except these four, if you specify any metrics in the policy, and if you send those metrics through this REST API, it would be taken care of. Yes. yes. If if you use those ex existing standard metrics, it will it will show an error during the binding itself, saying it is standard metrics. Don't use this name. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? All good. Okay. Thank okay, you. Then thank you. Thank you. Very you. Much.